There's three of us, so uh, myself, I'm a realtor, so Kingsmith Real Estate, um, Angel Fit and Healthy, who is um, a personal trainer, and Beauty Secrets, which is founded by Monique Prince. We felt a need to give back. Um, it started with the three of us having a conversation in the back of my car, and we wanted to do something for charity, and I wanted to support other female entrepreneurs. Um, we have 23 vendors here today. We have uh, Yummy Cupcake, we have Naroshi, we have House of Divas, we have Dainty Luxuries, uh, Arbonne, uh, Monique Candy Hair. The charity is uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters of Ajax Pickering. Um, we all live in Durham, so we felt the need to support a Durham charity. My sister passed away two years ago, suddenly. Um, they don't exactly know why. She was 39, um, and her birthday is tomorrow. Go for it. Honestly, don't fear, don't hold back. Follow your heart. Our slogan is together we are one. You're watching Caribbean Vibrations, and you know one of the things we want to do is support the arts. So we're here with Mr. Kevin Ormsby of Cache Dance. And the reason we're here with him today is because Dance Immersion is an organization we support, and they have a great event coming up on April 4th and 5th, Expression Now. So before we get into what you guys are doing, I want to learn a bit about you. Mm -hmm. What made you get drawn into dance? Um, well, I've been dancing since around 10, but I've been in the arts since I was three. So actually, I'm Jamaican by birth, and I've been doing it at the feet of, um, of our national folklorist, Miss Lou, um, on Rinding. So I started as a television kid, mm -hmm. and then went to the music theater parts of sides of things, and then transitioned transition to dance around 10 years old. Mm -hmm. So it's been a while. So when you came here, did you just continue to do dance, or was something you left for a bit and came back? I didn't leave it at all. I actually came here and I was in Scarborough. I'm, I'm Alvernite by... Um, Scarborough, you know, <laughs> big Apollo Scarborough Massive. <laughs> yeah, Nielsen and Finch. Um, and I went to Lester B. Pearson and met one of my dear friends, Tama Matthews Morgan, mm -hmm. actually, who said, you're a dancer, you should come dance with me. And we, we started dancing in a company, Dance Creep Performing... Dance Creep Performing Companies, I mm -hmm. think it's now called, um, Martin Scott Pascal. Mm -hmm. and started from there so that was 1992 and I've been doing it in North America I can't just say in um, in Toronto anymore because I also left in 2000 went to the States and danced there with Gart Fagan mm -hmm. who is the choreographer for the Lion King in his company for six years before coming back now dance is something that's you know people know to dance and know to wine and everything like that too but dance is something that doesn't get us supported as much as it should especially in the Caribbean arts I mean there's a lot you mentioned dance Carib and Tamla does her stuff and other people do what do you think the problem is why don't we I mean we like to fet but we don't support these kind of things what do you think one of the problems are with that um, well it's so close to our culture that we don't f we don't put value to it and there's also something called colonialism everybody wants their kids to be lawyers and doctors and all this stuff and no one ever thought of their dance their their kids being dancers or artists um, I like to say that dance holds the culture or the arts holds the culture and so it's close to us we do it we could whine because every you know what's different between what you do as a, as a dancer and artist and what I do when I'm winding up on the street but there's a whole bunch of things that goes into actually dancing more than just that when Hello, and you're watching Caribbean Vibrations. We're here today at the UE Toronto Alumni Gala in Toronto, and we're here with Ms. Buchanan Hines, the chair of the gala. Now, this is my first time attending, but you guys have been doing this for a little while. Tell us about the inception of the gala here in Toronto. Well, the inaugural gala was in, held in 2009. Um, this is the fifth year. We, the, a similar gala is held in New York. And we decided to try Toronto and it's been absolutely phenomenal. Um, we've received tremendous support from the Canadian corporate sector. We're sold out every year and it's now a fixture on the Toronto social calendar. Now why do you think it's important to have something like this here in Toronto? 
Well, for more than one reason, in that for instance, I know of exa 250 UA medical doctors who are practicing here in the greater Toronto area and making a seminal contribution to Canada. So, you know, not only are graduates working in the region, but a lot of them are right here. And as we say to Corporate Canada, if you look in your companies, you're going to find a few UWI graduates doing outstanding work. So tonight we have a whole bunch of honorees, but tell us one or two, because I mean, we know one of the big ones who's very big in entertainment right now. There's a lot of other people doing a lot of good things. So tell us about a couple of them. Well, we have Roger Mukin, who is from originally from Trinidad, and he is a chef, as you know. Uh, we have Dr. Anna Jarvis, who is an outstanding physician who has, you know, done incredible research for children at the the hospital for sick children. We have ba um, David Taylor, who has, you know, contributed significantly to the community and. Um, is outstanding in the accounting uh, field. So we have quite a few honorees and we're also honoring the Hospital for Sick Children and they are doing some incredible work. In fact, right now, they're doing a lot of research in cancer in Caribbean children. That sounds very, very great. Now, if people want to get involved, help you out, or just find more information about next year's gala, how would they do that? Well, you can go online at www.uwitorontogala.com um, we're always updating. You, if you can make contributions, you don't have to just come to the gala. You can go online and make contributions. Um, it's for the scholarship fund, which provides the opportunity of a lifetime to students, outstanding students who can't afford the tuition. Um, since the inaugural gala, we have awarded 150 scholarships across the region. That's Gregory Work. Thank you very much for your time, and you're watching Caribbean Vibrations. Thanks for having. Hey, you're watching Caribbean Vibrations. Don't adjust your set. I'm the short. Okay, so today we're here with Miss Gina Hargitay, mm -hmm. Miss Jamaica World, Miss World Caribbean. Now, I had the pleasure of hanging out with you yesterday as you visited Crawford Academy as well as another school in Pickering. So, one of the messages that you, that I learned from you, was about empowerment for women. So, you being a young woman yourself, what do you think girls should know as they grow up in this male dominated society? I think a girl should know, well, I think. I know because I grew up with such a strong mother that women do have strength in them. I mean, society tells us or society likes to insinuate that girls are the weaker sex, but I think once you realize the power within you and the power of equality, the fact that every human is made equal, and so men and women are equal too. Once you understand that and once you have education, enough education to fulfill what you want to do, then there's nothing that can stop you. I like that. Now, what is one of the most important things you learned going through this whole pageant process? I think. What I learned most is just to be self-confident. I learned confidence within myself because when I entered I was very young, of course, you're very, you're not sure of yourself, you're not sure who you are as yet and I think this has really opened my eyes to who I am more than anything and it's helped me mature and grow as a person. Okay. Now, what's one of the funnest things you've done this last year as you've taken over from Miss Jamaica World? I think the most fun I've had is really all the traveling. I've gotten to visit a lot of places that I've never been to. I've gone to Africa for the first time, I went to Senegal, and I've been to North America actually for the first time, America and Canada. And so the traveling is really the most entertaining part and seeing all the new cultures and new ideas is my favorite thing. So bucket list, what would you like to do next? What would I like to do next? Well, really what's on the list next is university. I want to do my degree and then I want to do a master's and then, I don't know, travel the world more. I mean, my goal in life is to visit at least five countries on every continent. That's it? Well, not only, but you know, <laughs> it's top of the list right now. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. You're watching Caribbean Vibrations, and we're here at the UE Toronto Alumni Gala with one and only Miss Tessa Ann Chen. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Okay, so I really enjoyed your performance actually at Cast Tuesday in Trinidad. Because <laughs> uh, I was there and I was like, what? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> now, everybody knows you from the voice, but I gotta be a little selfish. I really enjoyed Hideaway, and one of the videos I enjoyed the most was the one you did with Kess. Oh, in the high, low, and Trinidad, and I know it was our shots and everything like that. So, how did you meet Kess, and how did that even come about? I met Kess, he reached out to me. He reached out to my team, and um, he's just one of the sweetest, nicest guys you'll ever meet. And not just him, his brothers, band, you know, great set of guys. So, I mean, I 
like I said, Hideaway, I really enjoy that song. But I mean, people don't understand the background you come from with your parents and the carnations. And everything. What do you think the toughest thing was for you in the whole music industry as you went from going behind the scenes to in front of the mic? What was one of the hardest things for you? I think just staying motivated and staying hopeful because, as, you know, anybody knows this business can be a beast and it can bully you and beat you up sometimes. So, you know, definitely picking yourself up when you feel like, oh, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I don't know if I can take another hit, you know, but that is what this industry about is getting up even when you feel like you can't again and you know I said it before today like music it chooses you you don't choose it so it's it's in you to do it so for me that was the hardest thing was just staying motivated in the times when I just felt like oh nothing I'm doing is working nothing is going and you know thank God <laughs> thank God it would happen in some way well, well I, I have to believe that yeah now now that you've done the voice and things are going on what would you really like to do now that you can choose a lot of different things now what is it you really like to do I wouldn't be doing anything else I love what I'm doing I love working on the album I can't wait to, to share the album with everybody and having the opportunities to work with these amazing people like Dan Warren and you know um, Toby Gad, uh, amazing amazing people and um, this is my life this is what I've always dreamed of doing you know on any scale it's just to wake up every morning and be able to say I, I can sing because I believe that's my gift and before the voice I kind of made up my mind that okay Maybe it's not going in the way I think it is. Maybe, you know, I just know I'm going to wake up and sing, whether it's in a hotel <laughs> or the Grammys or a cruise ship. I was put here to sing. So whatever way you see fit, <laughs> use me. So that I believe that's why I'm here.